Usually at this time of year, we start talking about post-harvest burn down for farmers who are beginning small grain harvest in different areas of the country. But this year, we have to add to that because unfortunately, there are a lot of unplanted acres. So we're gonna talk about burn down in these two sometimes very different situations. Let's start first with these unplanted acres. The big difference with the unplanted acres is weeds could be enormous. Unfortunately, both Darren and I went through the year 1993 as young agronomists, and we were out there trying to burn down weeds that in some cases were one, two, three feet tall. When you've got enormously huge weeds, you've got a couple challenges. Number one, no product will be labeled. And number two, how are you gonna get great spray coverage? Because right below that canopy of thick weeds, there are a whole bunch of little weeds. So in that case, you're probably going to need to use lots of water, lots of spray pressure, and unfortunately, you may have to spray a second time if you don't get good coverage on the real small weeds that are down below. Brian, I thought you were going to say, unfortunately, you may have to slow down as well. Part of getting good spray coverage is not going too fast. Now I get it, with an airplane, for example, they're gonna be going a lot faster than you would with the ground rig, but they've also got all that downforce that they're pushing spray down into that crop. Let's just talk about the ground rig and you're doing the job yourself. You're gonna probably run 20 gallons of water and you're gonna go 10 miles an hour or slower to try to force that product down through the canopy and get the best coverage you can. The other thing is to have realistic expectations. Just know, nothing is labeled for those great big tall weeds and you're not gonna get 100% control, but if you can get 95% or better, now you've got just a few weeds that you've gotta come back with on the next pass. So going back to 1993, what we had a lot of people doing was Gramoxone and 2,4-D together. Now you might say, well wait, I wanna plant a cover crop next week. That 2,4-D could potentially ding the cover crop. Here's the good news with three foot tall solid weeds out in the field. None of that 2,4-D is getting to the ground. So the odds of any residual being left for next week are slim to none. Plus the fact, if you are gonna raise a cover crop, it's not your actual crop. If a little bit gets dinged up, if the stand is hurt a little bit, who cares? It's not that big a thing. You just want something out there to grow, to keep the mycorrhizae fungi going, to hold down the soil, prevent erosion, those kind of things. So anyway, I come back to, we do really like germoxone, but the problem with germoxone is it's super dangerous to human beings. If you haven't normally used germoxone in the past, be really careful with it. It's Paraquat is the active ingredient. It's about the same safety factor as what gasoline is. So it's very dangerous to human beings, but if you use it correctly and you use it safely, it is an excellent herbicide. And I like the fact that by the time you get done spraying the field, you will see where you have sprayed. You don't need to leave a mark or anything like that. You're gonna know probably within an hour of whether or not anything is going to die because it moves quickly in that plant. So if Brian sufficiently scared you off of Gramoxone, which you can use Gramoxone, it's okay. But if you don't want to, you could go to Roundup. But the problem is we do have a number of Roundup resistant weeds, whether it's mare's tail or pigweed or whatever in your area. So you could use Roundup, but then spike in other products. AIM is one I mentioned already that isn't going to have soil residual that could be used. Uh, but again, you could look at what specific weeds you have and try to find tank mix partners for Roundup to try to help that out. Yeah, you could throw in a little Metribuzin, Dicamba, 2,4-D, something like that. One of the big things is you probably want fast burn down so you can go work the ground and then you can plant a cover crop. So I understand why you want to use Germoxone, but there are certainly are alternatives. All right, let's switch gears and talk about the post-harvest burn down again. As we mentioned earlier, you're gonna be dealing with much smaller weeds compared to the unplanted acres, but some of those weeds may be perennial type weeds. I look at Canada thistle as one of those that if you didn't get it under control on your wheat crop, now you've got a plant that's been growing all summer. It's got a pretty good root system underneath it. So it's going to take a little different product to kill that. Something like Gramoxone, for example, is just going to burn off the top growth. It's not going to get down into that root system. If you've got a couple of months here before you're going to be coming back and planting again, well, you could certainly use a dicamba or a 2,4-D at this stage, or you could look at something that's actually going to take it out depending on crop rotation. Maybe you look at something like Stinger that's gonna get down into that root system, or you could just use a high rate of Roundup, which will also get all the way through that root system. And there you go. That's the answer is a high rate of Roundup. Usually when we're talking post-harvest burn down, the weeds are tiny because you've cut them off. And generally speaking, we don't have that big an issue with controlling weeds other than this. A lot of wheat in the United States anyway is grown 
or barley or oats, whatever, the small grain crops, they're grown in drier areas. Well, if it's been dry and hot, the problem is the weeds have thick, waxy leaf cuticles. So to penetrate through that, you may need some crop oil or methylated seed oil. So you can use the same products as normal, Roundup, 2,4-D, Dicamba, AIM, a lot of the things we talk about all the time, but maybe throw a little oil in with it, crop oil or methylated seed oil, and that will really help. Now the other thing again here is that residual component. How much time do you have and what crop are you rotating to? There are a number of good residual products, but be careful. If you aren't getting rainfall, like Brian mentioned in your area, those residuals are going to last even longer than what that label is going to say. We've seen many growers in drier parts of the country find this out the hard way that, oh, that product's only supposed to last for a month or that product's only supposed to last for two months and it's still sticking around three months, four months, six months later. So just be cautious in your area. If you're very dry, if you're getting less than 15 inches of annual rainfall, or if you're just going through a drought and not getting any rain this particular year, just add another season on before you rotate back if you've got sensitive crops. All right, but we're probably talking Valor here, and you can rotate to most crops soon with Valor. So that's the direction we'd want you to go. The direction we don't want you to go is Atrazine. With Atrazine, you've got a lot more risk in terms of the environment and certainly in terms of carryover. Well, there's a lot of things to think about in burn down after a crop or where you didn't get a crop planted. Hopefully we've given you some things to chew on today. One of the weeds that you might be going after is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you which specific products work best on our tough weed coming up next.